Hi, I'm Rachel Feldman with Hamptons TV, and tonight we are here at Guildhall's annual Academy of the Arts Lifetime Achievement Award at Cipriani's 42nd Street. And tonight being honored for the Lifetime Achievement Award is Dick Cavett for the Performing Arts, Marshall Brickman for the Literary Arts, Elizabeth Payton for the Visual Arts, and Louis B. Coleman for Philanthropy. So join us as we meet all the stars and everyone who's invited to this spectacular event. We are here with Bob Balaban, who is actually the 2010 winner of the Academy of Arts Awards in... Academy of the Arts Awards, uh, Lifetime Achievement Awards in Performing Arts, and no, no, I think it's like this is. It, they should really call it like a mid-lifetime award. That's really what it is. Yeah. Midlife crisis yeah. award. Yeah. But now this year, the, you're the master of ceremonies. It's your show. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really a master uh, <laughs> of anything in particular. It'll be fun. They're my friends. I, I love Dick Cavett and Marshall yeah. Bergman. They're great people, and the the art uh, the artist is fabulous, Elizabeth Payton. I actually been looking at some of her work, and, and she's great. So it'll be fun. And Lewis Coleman does a lot of wonderful things for the arts. So it's fabulous that he's being honored, and I'm. Very glad to be here. Are you going to possibly ask her to maybe do a, a portrait, a Bob Balaban portrait? I think she's done it, and she may be unveiling it tonight. But don't tell anybody. That would be, it'd be it's like you and Kurt Cobain. It would be very useless of her. <laughs> no, I love it. I think it would be really great. And so, what? How did you end up in the East End? Where did you? How did you? I've always wanted to live. Well, not always. I think. I went to the East End when I was about 28 years old for the first time, and I went, oh my God, i got to live here. Yeah. So about 100 years later, I built a house, and I moved there, and I live and there now. You're, and you're there most of the time now. Yeah, I'm a full-timer. I mean, I come to the city for things when I have to, uh, but I live out there, and I love it. I'm very happy out there. Me too. Same thing. Full-timer, and I love it. Just moved there from the city, and I love it. You love the winter. Yeah, no. right. I mean, it's just gorgeous. And so... You you produce, you direct, you write, but you act. Where where are you at home? Where's your, where's really your base? Where do you start from? I like to work. <laughs> this is my base. I like to be employed. Good answer. I, I prefer being paid, but I'll be employed. And then basically I'll, like, you know, this is a job, you know, so I, I tend to show up. But I do. I, I actually like doing everything. And it and they help each other. I find that being on both sides uh, makes it, it makes it a little more interesting and easier when you're when you switch around like that. Yeah, and I mean, then you have a lot of control over what's going to happen, and maybe even more. No, I have no control over anything. No. Yeah, I thought the producer has the. Isn't that the? That's the money. Isn't the money the control? No, the, the producer looks for money. Oh. <laughs> if the right. producer had money, he would be. Uh, they'd call him God. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we call the producers at VVH. <laughs> So we're here with Alec Baldwin, who actually himself is a, a previous winner of the Academy of Arts Lifetime Achievement Award, and you're an honorary chair at Guild Hall. You're super involved, and you did Equus last summer, which was a sellout hit. How did you know that? I, I, I've heard about you before. You're kind you of famous. I do now, yeah. Where? I live in Wayne Scott. You do where? Where in Wayne Scott? The, the, the room the up on the left. Okay. And, and you, uh, you're working on a show for this summer, too. You're really getting involved with the theater. Well, I'm doing um, the, um, uh, the film festival, which I'm on the board of, does their summer documentary series at, uh, the, um, uh, at Guild Hall. And, uh, but the play they're doing, I'm, I'm not doing a play there this summer. But you're involved. Yeah, no, I'm on the board, and I am very anxious to help them. I love them. Yeah, I love them. They're great. How was the experience doing Eccles last summer? It was amazing. It was really... Um, a great dream. I'd always dreamed about doing that play for years and never had the chance and then they gave us the opportunity and uh, I thought Sam was great and working with Schaffer and Tony was great and uh, I wish I could do it again one day maybe in a year or two. You know, we talked about doing it in LA maybe. Yeah, that's a good idea. You're like a lifelong East Ender. You're always there. I mean, I've seen you in the... For a while, yeah. 82 was when I got my first place that I rented and I bought my first house in 87. Now, where are you from? I'm Dix Hills, not far from you. No, from, yeah. you're from there? I'm from Long Island. I'm from Long I was going to say, you got rid of your, did you? I did, I took a couple Me acting too. classes and it's I totally gone. Home. I will go home and my friends are like, Alec, huh? What's going on in Hollywood? What's the latest? I mean, what's going on out there? Tell us about the Oscars. That's awesome. I see, Oscars. 
A-H-S-K-I-Z, Askiz. Do they ask you about it all the time? They ask me and ask me and ask me about the Askiz. Your friends are awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, but I had to get rid of, get rid of my accent. Yeah, no, me too, for sure. Coming out a little bit. Yeah, I had to try. It was yeah, hard I mean, work. Yeah, it's definitely, and it's, and do you, but you play a New Yorker all the time. Yeah, you know, it comes back. You ever notice people who lose their accent, it comes back when they're angry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I, when they're excited. Yeah. Like, my ex-wife was from Georgia, and she would, and sometimes she'd talk, and it was like, oh, my God, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't even understand what she was saying. Yeah. She'd be like, rah, 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 all y'all, rah. and I'd be like, whoa. No, my, my ex-boyfriend would say that whenever I was mad, I would always go, you're an asshole. Yeah. Yeah. Like, can I say that? Probably well, not. Well, it's your show. You can do it. You're a people. Want. Yeah, you're a boop. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to work with the folks at Guildhall to do the film festival, and I think we're going to have another great summer. And, and how, how do you feel just being here tonight? Because tonight's just fun for you. It's no work. I don't know all the honorees, but I know Cavett and I know Marshall. And I'm a huge admirer of Marshall Brickman, who's a great writer, famous, famous, famous screenwriter. And, of course, Cavett is a legend uh, as a TV uh, uh, host of his show for years. You can get Cavett's show. I encourage people. You really forget how, I know this is a cliche, but it's true. Cavett's show, you forget what a smart talk show was like, how intelligent a talk show could be, and how varied the guests could be. And they weren't always there promoting something or selling something. And uh, Cavett show, you can get it on DVD. You can get these DVD box sets, which I have. And you watch them. It's amazing. I mean, you watch these people come on there who are like the greatest of the greats. Everybody wanted to be on Cavett show. The most important people wanted to be on Cavett show. Yeah. And it was really a thrill. A little, yeah. You know what his wife said is that he has... You're you're me. Did you notice I'm that? not trying to. You know, it's, am it's amazing. I'm not trying this? to. And there's a little girl from Dick's house, and I'm she's like, she, no, no, you stand there. You be me now. This was you. You're like, you know. So anyway, uh, did you notice she did that? What? Yeah. No, I, I, I got to do it. You do whatever you want to do. I really okay, don't I'm care because I got the remedy. Well, I'm trying not to give them my side view. This isn't really my good side, so that's why. Okay, well, then face forward with me, and we'll do... You know, oh, right. look at this. This here is... Here we go. Put your arm this way, oh. and we'll talk. And this, but just, yeah, here we go. That's... See? This is normal. I think that's better. I'm totally. You know, really, come over here. You remember when I did Equus? This was yes. it. You know Sam? Yep. Hi, Sam, I'm Rachel. Pleasure to meet you. Sam, hey, how's it going? Oh, oh, We're standing in a straight line. Oh, okay. I'm going to leave you with Sam. Okay, thank you so and, uh, much. Yeah, great. Sam, <laughs> take good care. Stage whenever take I take care. it. Yeah. So, hi. Hi. Hey. So we're here with Sam Underwood, who was in Equus with Alec Baldwin last summer. And what was that experience like? Um, one of the most humbling experiences of my life, uh, getting to work with someone like Alec, obviously is a stage partner, um, Sir Peter Schaffer is a living playwright, um, and Sir Tony Walton is a director. Doesn't usually happen uh, for many young actors, so it was humbling is the word I use um, all the time. Uh, Alec's a very generous stage, uh, uh, stage partner as well as, you know, guy in life, so it was absolutely wonderful. Was that your first time out on the East End of Long Island? It was, actually. Um, I'd been invited out there earlier on uh, the year before to do a different piece, but it didn't work out. Um, I was traveling around the country. Um, it was a great first experience to be uh, in East Hampton doing that play. It was absolutely incredible. And, and now you live here? You live in the States here? I do, yeah. Um, I've been over here for about four and a half years. Just got my green card through, so there's no getting rid of me. Congratulations. Yeah, but you ain't getting rid of me now. Sorry. Um, and, you know, I'm celebrating it. Uh, so, uh, no, no, I, I, I really enjoy the uh, theatre community over here, uh, you, and uh, I have my own theatre company as well now. You do? What's that yeah. called? Fundamental Theatre Project. And, uh, the out goal, of the city? Yeah, out of the city. We're a transatlantic venture. Uh, my business partner, Nicola Murphy, is from Ireland. And what we both moved over here to be actors. Um, so what we're trying to create with the company and the projects we do is create a transatlantic theatre community. Right. Um, so the... When people, ever people say, you know, how different it is training or seeing theatre in London as to over here, we want to kind of, you know, make that a whole experience, you know, all around the world, technically, you know, eventually that's the big goal. I think uh, sometimes in the States, they, the, the straight plays or non-musicals are like, that's where the starving artists are. And the, the musical actors are the ones making money. And that's maybe the difference. Yeah, making money in theatre, that's always an interesting one. Yeah, um, but it's interesting, those starving artists that are in those plays and, you know, non-musicals, 
they're, they're doing exceptional work. Some of the most fabulous work in this city and around the country is off-Broadway, off-off-Broadway, black box theatre, reg regional theatres. Um, that's why Guildhall, you know, not just putting the word out, but, you know, Guildhall is an amazing place because of the history with that, that, that building. Um, and it's technically, you know, one of the most, uh, you know, best regional houses we could possibly have to do out of town tryouts you know for things that come to new york and announce for new york and uh i really you know hope it just keeps moving forward in regards to its theater because it's such a rich environment it really is a great opportunity for theater to come out of the east end and no one thinks really they think long island there's not going to be any theater but there really is there really is there absolutely is there's a great community there for it and uh it's no it's it's a it's a wonderful environment to do yeah. theater we are here with the Cullmans, um, and you are being honored tonight for a philanthropy award. And 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 congratulations and Mazel Tov! You two are newlyweds. That's right. Not quite not quite December nineteenth. It's coming. <laughs> we, we, we stuck together this long. I, I, it counts. It all counts. And they're registered at Macy's. And uh, okay. Right. In, in the discount. Yeah. <laughs> So you, as I was reading your bio, I saw everything about where you, you ha where you would come from, and you were in the, the, the your education, and, and I wondered how, what called you to philanthropy. Why did you decide that that was something that you wanted to do with, with your business skills? What did I want to do with what? With your business skills. Well, my business skills, I wanted to learn, use that to know how to give money away. Yeah, well, I mean, most people want to keep it. I mean, that's pretty. No, that's a silly thing to do. What are you gonna What are you gonna do with it? Exactly. Exactly. You take it with you. The name of Mr. Coleman's book, and I also love your other book, How to Make Money with Trying, with Really Trying. Yeah, that's, a, that's a that's a brochure. How to succeed in How to succeed in fundraising by really trying. And I think probably that's how you do it. Really try. That's the only way to do it. Yeah, and, you, and so you live in Sag Harbor now, right? Well, I have a house in Sag Harbor, which I'm, was up for sale. Oh. Yeah. What brought you to the East End? My my late wife wanted to go there. We have a house in Connecticut, so we had two houses. I don't need so many houses. <laughs> I decided to concentrate on one house. And and do you feel that the the East End has become a big part of your life? And I'm I was there for for uh, ten years. Wow. I think that's a part of my life. It's not all of it. Not all of it. Yes. I'm 92 years old, so I got a, got a few years on that. You look great. And where, where so where do you live now? Well, we live in New York City and in Darien, Connecticut. And uh, we're a little global. We are planning a wonderful trip to Rome and Venice in June. And uh, my work um, as a president of the Al Hirschfeld Foundation keeps me very busy. So yeah. we travel and I take Lewis with me to various places. We were just in New Orleans in the French Quarter where there is a 24-hour-a-day party going on. <laughs> But, and, and how do you feel about your husband being honored for this award? Well, this is really wonderful because uh, his philanthropy is such a fine part of his life. And, I, and it was one of the things that, uh, that really impressed me when I first met him. Because he's a man with a big heart and he shows, uh, he shows it. Aww. I learned all that from my mother. My mother always said, what's the good of leaving money when you're dead? You won't be around to hear about it. <laughs> Good at leaving anything when you're dead. That's exactly right. I, I said that to Warren Buffett one day. Well, what did he say back? Uh, not when I get 17 and a quarter percent on Berkshire Hathaway. We can't say that anymore. <laughs> that was before the crash. Oh. <laughs> wow, I love it. That's but it's good advice. I mean, what and and this is why you're being honored. You're being honored because you think about other people and because you're not you're not holding on to it. You're spreading it around and you're you're taking care. Best of it. I can. And I try to leverage it by, by making challenge gifts and drop dead challenge gifts and all those crazy words I write it. We are here with Gavin Brown, who is a well known art dealer and who actually discovered one of our honorees, Elizabeth Payton. Tell me about how you found her. Uh, she was married at the time to an art, another artist I show, Rick Ritterovinet, who is here with us tonight. And uh, I was involved in putting Rick Ritt in, a sh in a, uh, an exhibition in 1992 at that point. And Elizabeth and I became friends and I looked at her, her work and was very moved by it. And um, we started making exhibitions together. And you've been working with her ever since and you've sort of seen her career grow. And how do you feel about her being honored for this award tonight? Entirely appropriate. 
very well deserved. I mean, her stuff is it's so interesting, and I was telling her that I feel like when you look at it, you look at the portraits, you don't see a picture, but you see a person, and you get the personality, and you sort of see everything behind it. Is that kind of what you felt about her? Well, I think there was uh, she has this ability to tell a kind of truth in her in her art, and. Um, I think oftentimes one only sees that kind of truth looking in someone's eyes and uh, I think it's rare to be able to see that truth come so clearly out in an artwork. Yeah. We are here with Elizabeth Payton who is the um, award winner tonight for the uh, Academy of Arts Achievement Awards in Visual Arts and thank you for taking the talk with us. Thank you. And so I've been taken by all your portraits. I mean, they're gorgeous and they're, they're so, I, I feel like when I look at it, you're not looking at a picture of someone, you're looking at the person. I feel like I get to know their personality. What inspires you? Um, I'm very inspired by what the people do. I mean, I'm kind of inspired. Um, sometimes a uh, portrait can be a lot of things altogether, but mostly it's about what the people do, what they make. Most of the portraits are of artists. A lot of musicians, I've noticed, right? And musicians also. But uh, a lot of artists, too. And you spend a lot of time in the East End, right? Yeah, I do. I've got a place there. What, what brought you out there? Um, well, I first, uh, I first went there. My mother put me into a, a painting class when I was 16 in Southampton. I think she had no idea what the Hamptons were. <laughs> it was really fun, and it made a huge impression on me. And uh, then I went back because my dealer, uh, Gavin Brown, he had a place there. And then I just... I just love being out there, so I got a place and spend a lot of time there and have a studio there. Yeah, and, and do you, you've seen some of the work, obviously, that Guildhall has oh, in the yeah, gallery. they're fantastic. Yeah, it's, and, they, yeah they're great. There's a lot of art in the Hamptons, and there's a lot of artists. And it's a high concentration of very creative people. It's yeah. a, a very unusual. Do you feel really connected to that community out there? Well, um... I mean, I don't, I'm don't. i on the north side, not in the Hamptons, but yeah, I mean, because it's sort of the part of the world that I know in New York also. Yeah. And the, so many artists all loving being there. Yeah, yeah. the artists have that. Yeah. yeah, it's good. So who, um, what would you say to an up-and-coming artist that's, that's trying to figure out their way in the world? What would be an advi advice you'd have for them? That's such a nice question. Um, I would just say for them, they should just do what they love the most and make what they want to see the most in the world. Thank you so much. Thank that's you. great. I think that's really helpful. So we're here with Michael Bruno of First Dibs. And tell us a little bit about it. First Dibs is a marketplace website for the decorative arts and the fine arts. And that's our connection to Guild Hall. We've been promoting and sponsoring many art events and, and actually artists and galleries that represent the artists is, is our business. So we like to give back in the communities, especially Guild Hall, which is such a strong lineup of artists in a community that it's pretty special that in that area you can come out and visit so many amazing events and artists in, in your backyard. It's a pretty innovative idea. How did you come up with that? We started the website really to um, 10 years ago. It's our 10th anniversary wow. so it's, it's kind of old school in a way for web but our website focuses on finding the best specialists in each area so when you're searching the site you know you're dealing with the best antique dealers, 20th century dealers, fine art galleries, and um, it's date jewelry and vintage fashion. Wow. And so what do you think of our, our award winner tonight, Elizabeth Payton, and her work? Well, you know, it's, it's one of those things that, that it's one of the reasons I love what we do is everything's subjective. Everyone has their own opinion and ideas. I'm looking forward to hearing what she has to say, what everyone else has to say here tonight. But I'm very excited for her and, and honored to be here as well. So we're here with Marshall Brickman, who is a winner tonight, who is an awardee of the uh, the uh, Writers Award. Literary the arts. Literary arts. Whatever they are. Yes. It's like writing, not painting. Right. Mm -hmm. That would be the difference. How do you feel about winning this? Award? I feel that it's easier than hosting it, which I've done twice. So, yeah, I did, and you really have to prepare for that. Uh, did you give any tips to Bob Balaban? No, he doesn't need any tips. He's naturally funny. He walks in and he's and he's funny and amusing. I'm sure he's going to have a brass band and everything. And all I have to do is sort of be vaguely coherent for about 40 seconds, and then I get to flee with my piece of plastic. And you have a connection, a very deep connection, to another winner tonight, Dick Cavett. I used to work for Dick. Yeah, you were his head writer. I was his head writer during the uh, the early ABC days, when uh, when he was almost almost able to to become better than Carson, but uh, ABC was a very small network at that time, but that was the best time for both of us. That was, that was great. 
This was and this was right before. I don't know if you know this. This was right before you left Candid Camera. Oh well, we, Google. You've done some work on Google. Maybe Google, or maybe I'm writing an autobiography about you. Not an autobiography because I'm not you. A biography. Yes, Candid Camera was practically my first paying job on television. It was the first reality show, so I'm proud to be humili uh, uh, associated with uh, uh, that wonderfully humiliating show. Do you think that really was Cavett with the beard, or is it an imposter? I, I thought it was what did a. You think a of the beard? I thought he looked like a relation of Conan O'Brien. That's what I was getting. Right, he's trying. He's trying. I like, guess it's uh, emeritus. It's it's that sort of donish professorial look which he does so well. Well, when he walked in, I was like, he seems smart. That's what I He does seem. That's been the, like the basis of his career to seem smart. Yeah. And you are very smart. And I don't think a lot of people know this about you that you were that you are a musician and that you were in a band called the the Journeymen, right? That turned into the Mamas and the Papas. Who told you that? I do a lot of my work. Boy, if it weren't for Google, our lives could be... But you're a very interesting man. Yes, you're being I, awarded. I, John Phillips and Michelle and I uh, had a small group that when I fled, uh, because I was a nice Jewish boy from Brooklyn that did not partake of controlled substances, they then turned into the Mamas and the Papas. And I felt like I had escaped a burning building. Really? Wow. But we're going to do a movie about it. Really? Yeah. Michelle Phillips. Michelle, yes. Michelle Phillips, the right beautiful here. Beautiful girl in California. Michelle Phillips, if she were a Jew. No. You, you want the part? I mean, you could... You no, could. I, yeah, no, I really want the part. Okay. And then, and then you went on, and then you, you, you're a writer, and now you sort I feel like you sort of come full circle and brought your music and writing together with your shows that are on Broadway, your musicals. I, right, I've never been able to come up with anything I really like, so I keep changing. So, yes, I have a couple of shows on Broadway. Don't ask me how that happened. It's a miracle. Jersey Boys and the Addams Family. That's right. Now you're, in, now you're in the musicals. I'm in the musical. I'm in the theater. Yeah. But straight. There's like three of you, I heard. There are three of us. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, and it's been quite a ride. And uh, those, those of you in Wayne Scott who know to walk behind the camera are invited to come and see our show. It's fun. It's... It's, it's a Tony Award winner. Many Tonys. Time. Yeah. That's the same amount of awards we won with Annie Hall. So I guess I'm sort of a hoax. Uh, not a hoax. What do I mean? A, uh, a um, you know, what's the word where you're... you're um, a rich, famous guy? I'm a writer trying to think of a word. <laughs> yes, I'm a, I'm a, anyway, a hoax. Oh, a hoax, right. Mm -hmm. You're an anomaly? Is that no, that's an Indian. Oh, right, sorry. That was, yeah. That's a we, we, we're looking forward to everything. I'm, I really want to see Jersey Boys and Adam's Family. I love Nathan Lane. I can't wait to You've see You've not seen Jersey Boys? Well, well you it's must not try that I, see it. No, I, I, I definitely will. If you know, you, I would say come and see it, but there are no comps on Broadway. Broadway's in no, trouble. You know, you've got to pay the 120. Yeah. So we're looking forward to another 10 years on Broadway. Nice. And we're looking forward to the awards tonight. And congratulations well, again. Week, thank you. So we're here with Martha and Dick Cavett, who is the recipient tonight of the Performing Arts Award of the Academy of Arts Lifetime Achievement Award. And that's a big deal. Think of that, an entire lifetime. No, we're, we've started to call it the um, Mid-Lifetime Award. I was going to say, that's so much, far. It's so the far. So Far Award. That's much more tactful. I like that. Yeah. I got an award a couple of years ago for being a t television pioneer. A pioneer. Yeah, but Daniel Boone and people like that are pioneers. And the covered wagon is taking up a lot of room. Yeah, you, the whole frontier. Don't know where to park our covered wagon anymore. There was there was just dirt roads before you, and now you've just you've opened up the entire frontier. But as I was reading everything about you, and I know you're an actor, obviously, and I know everything that you've done, but I was wondering, how, was this the plan? Did you think, I really want to be a TV host, that's where I want to go with this, or did you just want to be an actor? Never. It was the last thing in the world I thought I would ever be. Uh, my highest ambition as a fan of the Jack Parr show was to be a guest. I never expect that would have been heaven enough for me. Um, I'm also a better guest like, than I am a host, but you may differ in your opinion. And, and it started out as a it started out as a daytime talk show. And then how did it turn into a nighttime talk show? You know everything. Uh, homework. Yeah. Well, I was on ABC Daytime, and uh, that show went almost a year, and then off, and then they replaced Joey Bishop with me nighttime. Yeah. So it wasn't the next day that I went to nighttime, but fairly soon after. Yeah. yeah. 
And how is it having Marshall Berkman here with you, who was your writer, your head writer? I mean, that must be pretty great to be together. I'm afraid I don't know the name. <laughs> oh, please tell him I said that. <laughs> oh, I will. Yeah, Berkman's a hell of a writer, as you know. Yeah, we, we really, we go back so far that it would stun you and you would think that uh, we... It's a lifetime. Almost, yeah. <laughs> we used to correspond in hieroglyphics, that's how far back. <laughs> On the frontier. Um, and, and how does this feel? Like, how does this feel to be a part of something that's a part... This is, this is about arts in the East End, and you live in Montauk. How does it feel to be, not, to be awarded for, for an artist that lives in the East End? It feels swell. Uh, I thought it would feel horrible, but in fact, uh, <laughs> that's good because that's it's not a bad feeling. It's uh, but you're always dubious about do I deserve this more than any other dozen people I can think of to name quickly? Don't make me do that. But uh, and how how did you guys end up in East End? You're in Montauk, and yeah. what brought you guys? New York there? and Montauk, right. the way people say New York and Miami or right. whatever. You know. What brought you to the to the East End? What brought you to Montauk? What brought me to who? To Montauk, the East End of Long Island. Oh, um, a sheer chance. I was in a summer theater in Williamstown. The director was dating a lady whose parents owned a house in Montauk. And he said, you should take it for the summer. And I looked into it, and I did. When was this? About two hours ago. <laughs> Like that. You know, time compresses when you get to a certain age. And let me ask you, are you renting it for the summer? Is there any availability? <laughs> Nor am I renting it out for the summer. Any chance that no... We're not renting it now, no, are no, we? We're not renting it. I hope I'm not paying all this time and not know it. <laughs> and how do you feel about having him being honored? I mean, this is a pretty... Oh, big he deserves it. He's the, he deserves it. He's just an extraordinary uh, talent. I, uh, oh, I shouldn't say that so he can hear it, should I? No, but I'm it's, not uh, listening. So oh, okay. okay, good. No, he's, he's better at what he does than anybody else in the world. I think, having been a talk show guest with Johnny, uh, there is Smurve, um, I knew what it felt like, and I knew what made a talk show guest uneasy or uncertain or f worried or worried about a pause that I would leap in and fill for them and that kind of thing. It's, it, it's in that area of... But it's, partly, it's also partly, though, the next question and the next question, and all of a sudden you're off telling about things you had never even articulated to yourself. Yes. And, I think and, that's and a question can... talent that you've never even had to develop. It just was there. Keep talking. <laughs> There's more. Um, <laughs> and also, a question is only a part of a talk show. It's when the question turns into a conversation that it gets better. Right. Well, I, I mean, you, you seem to, you're always listening. I mean, I think that's the thing. You're listening and you're interested. I found it very hard to be listening at the beginning because you got six other things on your mind and suddenly the guest's lips have stopped moving and you think, what were they saying? <laughs> Somebody tell me. Oh, God. I have no idea what that means. I never feel that way. I'm always prepared. <laughs> well, maybe someday it'll happen to you. No, I feel I can definitely learn a lot, and I, I, I really, your whole journey, your whole story was really inspiring to me. What, um... Awful when you look at them and think, what a goofy-looking face and tie this guest has. Oh, my God, I don't know what they just said. No, I love you. You're hilarious. I love that you're so easygoing. This is, I, I feel like I want to tell you everything. So what happened with my mother was... Um, but You're too good at this. Did you hear that? But what I but so I want to know what would be your inspirational words for new for for new performers new new anyone interested in hosting or or acting what what would you tell them going forth? It's a rotten damn game, and if you can do anything else, do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm very yeah. practical and very realistic. Yeah. But if you are called to it and you know that it's that or nothing. Then for God's sake, do it. And don't let anybody talk you into going to law school or dental college. Thank you so much for joining us for this wonderful evening. We had such a good time meeting all the honorees and guests. We hope you did too. I'm Rachel Feldman for Hamptons TV.